Well, this is what Red was built for, so it's time to try her out. I can't wait. The whole plan is to kick off from the back of Lithgow and work our way through some of the better country, some of the interesting country, until we get to the top of Mount Walker. Now, along the way, we're going to go through valleys, up hills, and check out the site of an old convict stockade. On this trip, I'm taking a long rod. Now, I've said I'm taking him along, but seeing as he pulls most of the vehicles out of this area, well, he and his Hilux do, I guess he's really taking me along. The vehicle I'm driving at the moment is a 1986 Toyota. Hilux. We do a, a hell of a lot of bush rescues out here, as you can imagine, people coming from four-wheel drive clubs all over the, all over Australia. They get uh, disillusioned, they get lost, uh, we get phone calls, we're stuck, we need a hand, and the first thing the police do is they try and um, ring us to get us to come out and help. Everybody says, that won't pull my Land Cruiser out of that bog, this won't do that, but it's designed to do that. That Hilux is a bit of a trick unit. It's a uh, dead standard, very slow diesel, with nice big ball tyres, suspension that moves all over the place like you wouldn't believe, and a huge winch right in the back of the tray. Now what Rod can't do with this, can't be done. Huggy's brought along his radio work truck. He's had all sorts of four-wheel drives in the past, but the need to get here from work and get back to work means he's brought the radio along for this trip. I actually live on a couple of hundred acres out in the Mudgee area, so we need the four-wheel drive to get around up there as well. So I've been coming out here for quite a few years now. Rodney and myself have been good mates for over 20 years. We've done quite a few rescues in the bush together. We've done Rose Hill Show for many years together as well, building the four-wheel drive test track down there. So to come out here on this trip, it's, uh, it's real good fun. Ollie Leckband's the author of the Mount Walker Stockade, and he's spent decades looking around this area with his metal detector. He's one of the real experts on Australian convict history. And to have a local bloke like him along on a trip like this, well, that's just a gold mine, isn't it? Oh, good. Come on, dog. Good to see you. Rocket Rod. How are you? Mate? <laughs> good to see you, mate. Great Excellent. To see you. Huggy. How are you, Ruthie? Oh, good on you, mate. How are you, John? You must be Ollie. Ollie. That's oh, great. terrific. Yeah. Fantastic. Pleasure to meet you, mate. Same here. Wow. Sorting out a bit of stuff, mate, for you. Oh, yeah, I can see the map. A bit of a map to show, so we can see where we're going. Oh, you don't normally use maps around no, here, right? We don't, but we could be show you. <laughs> it's fantastic country, isn't Beautiful. it? Beautiful. Oh. Absolutely gorgeous. Couldn't pick a better day. No. This is Red's first trip out of the shed. One of the best things about Big Red is the noise of that 350 Chevy. It's a fantastic engine. I bought it brand new, a crate engine from Eagle Motors. And uh, you know what? It's the first new motor I've ever had in my whole life. I've never owned a new vehicle. I've always been fixing up old ones. It's so nice to have this lovely new engine. If only I could get the carburetor to work properly. It's lovely driving through this country behind Lithgow. It really is. There's plenty of vegetation. The tracks are well used. Obviously a few clubs and quite a few individuals come through here at various times. But in the background, all the time, you've got the noise of the birds. And in this case, I can hear water trickling down the stream. And that's just lovely. During this trip, you'll probably hear a fairly constant noise coming out of the front of red. Whenever the camera's near the front of red, what that is, is the electric fan. It's a big one, it's a 10 inch electric fan. And basically, that thing runs from about five minutes after you've started the motor until the end of the day when you switch it off. Oh no! Hey, I really? don't believe it! I know you'd show up! What are you doing here, mate? Stuck again. <laughs> Last time was the mud, this time's the sand. You just can't rely on us to pull you out all the time, mate, honest. What's your name, mate? Uh, Manny. Manny? Yeah. And uh, it's a new Wrangler? Brand new. <laughs> 800 kilometres old. Wow. <laughs> Well, we'll drive action, I'll say. 
Yeah. Yeah, man. Best magazine. Missing Ruthie now. <laughs> I tell you what, I love the way you're finding out where this Jeep goes. <laughs> Aren't you, hey? Oh, where I can stick it. <laughs> All right, mate. We'll pull you out. Rod's oh, here with me, so we'll give you, a, give you a bit of a cable, I think. Yep. One of the braces on one side of the red truck takes a jerry can, full of water in this case, and I've been using the one on the other side to carry the recovery gear. Keeps it nice and handy, especially when you've got blokes like Manny around. I think he's yet to find out what his Jeep can't do, and uh, I guess that's not really a problem, is it? He's loving it. This is about the third time I've used this winch, and the first two were just to recover things out of the garden trailer. It's an excellent thing, it really is. I don't believe it, eh? How lucky is he? Manny, when we take up the strain with the wire rope, you just start your motor and just have your wheels spinning slightly. Don't rev it, OK? You don't have to go hard. Just that momentum will help pull it out. Yep. OK? Got that. Rod's given good advice, but I tell you what, Manny's in the Jeep Club. He hasn't been there that long, but I reckon they would have told him a few things by now. Those guys like to go out and get stuck every chance they can. And he's out. I reckon a little bit more mumbo and some bigger tyres and he would have shot through that the first time anyway. Well, I reckon it might be good for Manny and good for us if he comes along with us for a while. I'm fairly new to four-wheel driving. This Jeep's about seven months old only and enjoying it because get to see much more places, much more of the bush, of the natural beauty of Australia. You can see the concrete jungles anyway, but the real beauty is this where we're driving today. Hey, thanks guys for the recovery. Actually, I really want to do the bit where I got stuck. Can you just show me the correct line that I should have taken? Yeah, Manny, happy to, mate. Um, just follow me through and as, I'll, uh, as we go through, I'll guide you through, mate. And show you how to stay out of trouble. Copy that. Just on this river crossing, Manny, just stay over to your left-hand side, mate. It's a bit washed away on the right. Copy that. Thanks, mate. <laughs> oh, Manny, eh? You pull him out, and the first thing he wants to do is go back again. Do it again. I love his attitude. Top attitude. I think it was Ollie who pointed it out to me, but I'd started to notice myself that if there was an easy way and a hard way of going somewhere, Rod had picked the hard way every time. He just enjoys his four-wheel driving. He loves that feeling of accomplishment that we all do when your truck finally makes it up something a bit tricky. And so we were taking the hard line wherever we could. And you know what? I was happy to do that with the red truck. Manny, he just couldn't believe his luck. He got to try all sorts of things. And Huggy, well, Huggy, he just hangs in there no matter what. He can put that radio into places you wouldn't even dream of. Rod knows about a really mean hill over here, and I'm keen to give it a go. This will be the test for the Holly Carby, I reckon. Well, this may be the next steepest one we can find, I don't know. Right, well, this is the convoy's first hill. It's also Red's first hill. My big tip here is power. I've got power now. Milo doesn't have that much power, but even in Milo, I've got a hand throttle. The whole idea to successful hill climbing is to maintain your engine revs from the bottom to the top. And that way, you're not breaking traction by stomping on the throttle or backing off too hard. Because once you break traction, it's hard to get it back. Now you see trucks spinning all over the place, you know, guys laying into it, backing off, all the rest of that stuff. Very exciting, but it doesn't get you to the top of the hill. The way to get to the top of the hill is apply a constant amount of power. And with 350 odd horsepower here, you can bet that I'm just gonna pick 1800 revs, something like that, and try and hold it all the way to the top. Minimum wheel spin, that's the difference. We'll see if it works. We've got another secret trick here too, and that is 
that the transfer case has got uh, Mark's adapters, Gearmaster gears. Now, I have known for a long time that this can make a lot of difference, but I've never had a truck with the actual gears themselves. The red truck has, it's got the Gearmaster set up, and you know what, the difference is just out of this world. Not only on the climbs, but on the downhill descents, as I was to find out later on. Okay, Red's first big hill. If the holly handles this, we're doing all right. Now, in my mind, the whole idea behind a decent hill is to set up for it properly. So we've paced it out. We know the best track. Uh, I've got the compressor on, because I've got lockers. Hear that? That's the back locker clicking in. Back pro locker, it's on. I'm not gonna go for the front one. And I'm trying to hold the engine revs dead steady. Now I'm doing that in this truck by jamming my foot against the edge of the truck. Kind of easy in a 40 series. It's got a piece protruding out next to the flap. Whoops, there goes the holly, missing a little bit. So I can just hold the throttle dead still. And then of course, the trick is to try and find the best track up. Whoops. Oh, we're getting a couple of misses out of that carby. That's all right, it deserves to miss on this hill. Now I'm not using the front locker for a really good reason, because this hill requires a bit of steering, and unless I get truly stuck, I don't want to use that locker. And the reason I don't want to is because this truck doesn't have power steering. Lots of rocking around, but we've beaten this hill. Red's done it, you beauty! I'm away. Look at that Jeep suspension working, hey? Coils at all four corners give them the, the Jeeps a big advantage and they really are a beautiful thing to ride in in country like this. Manny's nearly standard Jeep with its traction control and standard tyres is going places that all sorts of vehicles wouldn't ever hope. They're a pretty awesome vehicle, really. This isn't the worst hill in the world, but it's certainly a really good one for a trial. You know how close to my heart this trip is? And I guess it's because it involves so much convict heritage. You see, deep down, I reckon, if you love Australia, and I know you guys do, then you've got to love our history too. And um, one of my family names, one of the names from my family is West. And the Wests were on the second fleet, they were convicts. Um, which kind of makes sense, really. Oh, it's a bit of a family story, I guess, but. Uh, there's always been that sort of weird naughty boys ever since, you know. And this stockade that we're going to see, well, I can't help wondering if there might have been one of my mob there, you know, in chains, breaking rocks. Although, um, there's more chance he's probably back at the nearest pub having a drink, but anyway, I can't wait to see this. This is the site where this was painted, which means the stockade must have been just over there. That's right. And I'd say the, the artist in the 1830s would have walked up here, right. up this road, and I'd say about there where that tree is, you can see that bit of a rise there? Yes, yeah, yeah, you can, right. yeah, it's still there. Where the soldier is standing yes. on guard on the west bank of the Cox's River, yep. I'd say in this general area, this is where this painting was done in the 1830s. So if we go down here and look across the water. Oh, wow. I can you can see, see, yes. Now you can see the convict troop. Going around that morning, corner. Going around the corner. It was the main mm -hmm. communication centre between Bathurst and Penrith. There was no other stockade larger than it. Wow. And there's a, even a triangle there. Oh, a flogging yeah. triangle. A flogging triangle, yes. Look, that's funny, isn't it? This artist's got so much detail in this, in this painting, but he missed out on the power lines altogether. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no power lines. These were the w worst of the worst repeat offenders. 
There was a lot of road gang violence, mm -hmm. and they, there was rebellion. They tried to sabotage the stockade by burning it and doing all, mm. all that sort of thing, and there was escapes. This is amazing. To be standing here 180 years later to know what this was like thanks to this painting. I'll tell you what though, Dolly, the sun's nearly gone. We got somewhere we can camp, Rod? Mate, got a lovely little spot on the flat, all around us, beautiful ridges with sandstone, the sun going down, it's an absolute picture. We'll have to go and have a look at that. You're not going to chuck us in leg irons and make us work on the farm tomorrow, are you, it's mate? Possible. Could be a possibility, Rich. <laughs> if you don't shout, leg irons. <laughs> OK, thanks, Ollie. That was the most fascinating yarn I've heard. Wow. True, true. True, I oh, know. True. you got to wonder, don't you? I mean, how many of your rallies worked out on a pick through these hills, eh? Makes you feel a bit stupid being here with a shovel, though, doesn't it? Oh, boy, what a first day. I've had an absolute ball. I just hope my curry's up to Manny's standards. Oh, that's not going to be easy, either. This is heaven. You guys have better grab a beer. I already cracked one. And I've got dinner ready. Oh! What are we having, mate? Hey, what are we having? Ah, uh, we're having a curry. Whoa. Sorry, Manny. <laughs> <laughs> and I reckon we should get Manny to taste test it, don't you reckon? Beauty. Oh, I, reckon good idea. Yeah. I cooked dinner sometime before lunch. Have a look at this. Now, this is possibly the most ridiculously easy thing I've ever cooked. I've never done an instant meal. I'm not into instant cooking, to be honest, um, mostly because it doesn't taste any good. But Someone gave me one of these to try, and it was that good, I thought I've got to show everyone. It's called the Curry Tree Rogan Josh. I think they do a vindaloo. They do about half a dozen different curries, and they're made in India, and they're just too easy. Starts out with some meat, uh, 500 grams of meat. I've got about 600 grams of chicken here, so that'll do the trick. I'll just slice that up. You know, it's so much easier to slice meat if your knife is sharp. Here we are in the bush in Lithgow. All the guys have got sharp knives. You find that. That's the sign, I reckon, of an Aussie bushman. He won't handle a blunt axe, a blunt chainsaw, or a blunt knife. They just won't do it. OK, so essentially all we need to do is brown up the chicken. I'm using butter because I lost my olive oil. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Never mind. Now this is how simple this meal is. Brown the meat, add the curry envelope that I'll show you in a minute, the right amount of water, that's it. It's just too easy. I'm really breaking the rules here because you're supposed to heat the water up in a jug, add the curry mix, beat it all up and then add it to the chicken. Well guess what, I don't have a jug. Now look at that, that's it. It says on the box, do not add anything else. And you know what, it tastes a lot better if you don't add a thing. How do I know that? Because they gave me 12 of these to try and this is the last one. How good's that? Oh, it even smells like an Indian restaurant. Lovely. Doesn't look too flash coming out of the packet, does it? That's all right. Righto. And then the trick is to break it up, get it simmering. And in this case, we're going to cook it in a thermos pot. And by the end of the day, we'll be able to open that pot up the rice will be cooked, the curry will be magnificent, and if it's not, I'm going to be in a whole lot of trouble with the crew, I can tell you that. And then all we do is whack it in the thermos pot, because these things have such a thick base, these stainless steel pots, once they're in there, that's the rice by the way, it'll be cooked beautifully too by the end of the day, and that's it, it's sealed, the handle locks it in, but here's an innovation that they actually, the thermos people call a Ruthie bag because I suggested it to them, I can't believe they went ahead and did it. It's a great idea though. It's an extra insulated bag, zip it up and then I can just bung this in a corner of the tray of the truck and it'll hold everything together. Um, you can always take the pot out, put a bag of ice in it, take a dozen beers up to the next camp in it. Magic. Now, it's been cooking all day, so we'll see what it's like. While Ruth is um, cooking up his curry, I've actually come out into this pristine bush of ours and I've looked around and I've found what we call a disgraceful mess. Don't be frightened to pick up somebody else's rubbish. It's uh, better to look after our country than, uh, than to leave it messy and 
let the animals get caught up in it. This has been in the truck cooking all day. Yeah, yeah, we cooked this before we pulled you out this morning. Are they? Yeah. This is a Rogan Josh chicken. Are they? Does it look right? Oh yeah, it looks beautiful. <laughs> Good man. Thanks, mate. <laughs> wow, this is serious. Having someone like Nanny test a curry. And the beauty thing is, because it came out of a packet, if he doesn't like it, I can blame the packet. Mmm. Almost as good as my mum cooks. <laughs> yeah, fair dinkum. Almost. Yeah, almost. <laughs> Not exactly, but almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mum <laughs> might see this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's lovely. Oh, good. Mate, the others are over there setting up their camp. You're camping with us tonight. Oh, yeah? yeah? Beauty. Well, um, there's enough tucker for everyone. I'll get them over in a minute. I'm just going to set my swag up. Right. And I'm going to have some curry and a beer around the fire. Oh yeah, no doubt. Good stuff. Next morning dawned as clear as the day before. Now I reckon I sprung a bit of luck here because I know it can cloud up and rain in Lithgow at the drop of a hat. But not for me, and not today. Now I've been having dramas with uh, dirt in the fuel. And it's quite simple really. This truck for 30 years was a diesel and I filled it up with petrol. Now I did drain it of course and I gave it a couple of hits but it wasn't enough. The diesel has algae in it, all sorts of stuff and it's breaking loose the sides of the uh, the tank, the scum that's built up over the years. It's coming through, it's even getting through the filters. Uh, that's the algae component. The thing I'm going to do now is to drop the fuel out of it, give it a little bit of a flush, it hasn't got much fuel in and that's uh, one more step in the right direction. Here we go. It's not a hard job to drain a fuel tank, as long as it's got a drain plug. Some of them don't, believe it or not. Oh, the trick out, is. is to make sure you don't burr the thing oh, up, because if you do, stuff. you'll never get it back in there. Now, if it's really oh, tight, it's... and if you've really got to lay into it, leave it alone. Find another way, because there's a fair chance you'll cause some damage that you won't be able to repair easily. So my mates over at TJM have helped me out here by putting yep. in a fuel rack behind the cab so that I can carry another 80 litres in four jerry cans. Now that might sound like a clumsy way to go, but it's my preferred option, it really is. Especially because in this great big country that we call home, it's very easy to spring a leak on a fuel tank and lose the lot. Huggy's pretty impressed with the new drums. They've got a sort of a mesh inside them to stop flashback. It's pretty impressive stuff, actually. While the truck warms up, I'll pack up. Beautiful day. We're all packed up. Time to go. Mount Walker today with a bit of luck. You've got to admit, the red truck just sounds fantastic, doesn't it? Thanks, Cookie. That's one of the best exhaust systems I've ever made. Uh, sorry, you've ever made. I don't know what you made it out of either, mate, but you can just about fit a couple of ferrets up that hole. to find us a nice river and this one's beautiful. Wow, good on you mate. It's amazing how many times in Australia that the uh, the creek or the riverbed is also the best way to get somewhere. I guess it's because water always flows downhill, it knows what it's doing. Plenty of trout swimming around in the in the creek too. It's a pretty amazing place, you know. You could just about camp up down here, fish, live on the fish, pick a few berries. Oh, it's just too good. Well, there you go, a new record. Second time in its life that truck's been washed. First decent bit of downhill coming up here. And um, the thing about going down a hill is that you require the slowest gear you've got, the lowest gear you've got. Uh, in a diesel, you know, low range first, that'll normally pull you up most of the way so you're not using your brakes all the time. The problem with riding the brakes all the way is that if it's a long hill, they're going to heat up. And once they start heating up, they'll fade. Now, um, this being a petrol truck, you reckon I'd just be launching over the edge and straight down. 
but uh, that's not the case at all because I've got a couple of things working in my favour in this truck. One is the gear master. Now, people figure that a, a lower low range is all about climbing rocks. It's not really. It's also a wonderful thing to have for engine braking. By upping the gear ratio, or lowering the gear ratio, whichever way you want to go, um, it slows the truck right down. The engine has to rev a lot harder, and therefore, even though this is a petrol V8, it's got a fair bit of engine braking. The second, a big advantage I've got, is that I've got these pro lockers, which means I can lock up the rear axle, and that will help me hold the truck steady. Here's hoping, I haven't actually tried it before. At this stage, it's all theory. Let's go and give it a go. Nothing quite like the feeling of dropping over the edge of a big hill, is there? That's not bad. Good engine braking, actually. It's great. Because of the gearing, that's really helping no end. And the lockers are holding it pretty steady. I don't think it would matter who was in front. Manny would be game enough to follow anyone, anywhere. Except over the side of a cliff, I'd reckon. Just knock that one out, because I'm going to go around a corner here. Ah, oh, very good. Back on for this bit. Oh, a bit rugged. Manny's really working on his wheel placement by now. He's got it sus too. He knows that he should be not looking at the terrain as a track going somewhere, but looking at it as a series of ups and downs and trying to pick the higher spots. If you keep your wheels on the higher spots, then you're going to do away with clearance problems, aren't you? Doesn't always work, but it's good in theory. A little bit of brake. That's no brake. How's that? That's pretty good. Kill the lockers, need a bit of steering. Oh boy! Nearly there. Oh, one more, come on baby. Beautiful. Red truck's doing it. I'll tell you what, it's doing it for me too. It's great. The traction control in the Jeep's really quite impressive stuff. Even on a downhill run, you can see the way it all comes together to control a bit of wheel spin. Or well, wheel braking, I should say. All right, Manny! <laughs> <laughs> hey, brother! Yeah. Good on you. Well done. Thanks, mate. Man, that was fantastic, eh? Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, look, you look like you're all over the place, but mostly coming downhill. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, Manny, yeah. you reckon that was a good hill? Yeah. Wait till you see Mount Walker, mate. We're going there now. We've oh, got to, beauty. We've got to get going. Oh, oh hey, good. let's go. See ya. Let's go. Lots of changes. These rocky hill climbs, well, they're just like rocky hill climbs all over Australia, except they tend to be a bit steeper, and some of the rocks are sharper, too. Hey, guys, I need help. Urgent, urgent. OK, we're coming, Manny. Ready, what was that, mate? Was that Manny? Yeah, mate. Ah, uh, urgent. I'm going back. You coming too? Back there within five. Yeah, picked up the wrong line actually. We wrote a Jeep off about a couple of months ago, same thing. Flipped over, what I did just now. I need some weight on that side and I'll be right. Or other thing we can do is lift this side up somehow, I don't know. Let's see. Let's leave it up to Ruthie to work, work yeah? <laughs> Gee, Manny, you hardly look worried at all there, mate. Woohoo! I reckon he's sweating under that turban, eh? Oh, we'll see. We'll see. This is uh, quite tricky. In this case, I'm letting Rod call the shots because he's the bloke who does all the recoveries around here and him and Huggy have pulled out heaps of guys all over the place. The real truth to a recovery no, no, is that you want one person <laughs> directing it. If you've got two people directing it, you're going to get into all sorts Manny, of trouble. what we're going to do is we're going to roll it back down. Yep. It's the safest way in this situation, so yep. we'll just take up the strain on the winch and we'll just lower you back down to get you out of this problem. 
and then we'll have another go at it. Now, in this particular job, for instance, Rod, he wants to lower Manny back down. That's fair enough, and as it turned out, it worked beautifully. Me, I probably would have hooked him from the other side and pulled him up the hill. I reckon that would have worked too, but it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, all we want to do is save the Jeep. Got it. That's great. You just let, let Rod tell you where to put your wheels. Turn your wheels towards me. Turn them towards me. Keep coming. Right, and go backwards like that, slowly. No, let him go backwards slowly. Go backwards, Manny. It, it won't tip. It won't tip, mate. Just go backwards slowly. It's going in. You're right. Keep going. Keep going at that angle. You're right. Keep going. You're right. You've got it. It's not going to go anywhere. Keep going. Back you go. Now straighten your wheels back the other way. That's and I've got to be honest, too. If it had been me running this recovery, I probably would have had a fat bum, like me, hanging off the other side of Manny's Jeep, just to give him that little bit of 10 stone Manny, luxury. Yes, dear, I know, it's more like 15 stone. Right, now turn your wheels to the left, left hand down. That's it. Back you go. Right, turn your wheels to the right. Put it into low range, low gear, and go back down the hill. He's a bad man. <laughs> so much for taking the easy way, eh? <laughs> That's what happens if you go out in the bush by yourself. Yeah. And you come unstuck like that. It's very easy to tip over a vehicle in a situation like that, but. Luckily, we had some experience on hand. We were able to bring Manny back out safely. <laughs> but now he should get out and walk up and have a look to pick a line, and we'll have another shot at it. Yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> we were nearly one reader down. <laughs> and you know what? Second time through, with a little bit of help from Huggy, a little bit of wheel placement, a bit of a walk and a look, and he made it no worries at all. Well, sort of no worries. It was still a tricky climb. Anything with a ditch in the middle is going to be tricky, isn't it? But it was good of Huggy to give him a few of these lessons on, you know, how to handle having a navigator outside the car. It can be a real problem. You're sitting there, you can see the steering wheel, you can feel what the vehicle's doing, but you can't see where your wheels are really at. That's when it's handy to have someone outside the car telling you what to do. As long as they know what you're up to, it shouldn't cause too many dramas. If they don't, well, you've stuffed it, haven't you? But that's beside Manny. the point. We don't have that problem. I don't know how many rescues Rod's pulled with this old jigger. Some of his stories about some of the rescues around the Lithgow, Blue Mountains areas, really quite awesome yarns. Fantastic, actually. It's good to see, you know, you get these local guys who know their country, love their four-wheel driving, and also become such a useful part of the community, too, at the same time. I'm just hoping he doesn't have to pull the red truck out, that's all. Thanks, mate. Oh, good on you, Thank you. Oh, That's good fun, bud. <laughs> good on you, mate. Good fun? Yeah. Man, you're about this much off going over. I know. <laughs> Got to the top of the hill. Beauty. Yeah, hey, you learned something this yeah. week. Now, fellas, we're just about there. We've got to go around this corner and we'll be at the base of Mount Walker. Very, very steep country. Very dangerous country. No dramas, mate. Um, we'll just pull up here and go and have a bit of a look first, eh? Mate, good idea. The changes every week, so we better have a look before we decide to do anything. Oh, a little bit of altitude here, guys. Mate, the infamous Mount Walker. <laughs> and we're walking it. You'll love it. <laughs> oh. So that's the top of Mount Walker, just 200 yards up there, eh? That's the infamous Mount Walker, mate. Yeah, she's pretty loose and it's fairly, fairly steep. This is Locker's only 
country for yeah, sure. Mate, yeah, it's a bit dangerous, yeah. normal cars. Um, if you're not a professional driver or you haven't done much professional driving, you shouldn't even attempt something like this. It's too dangerous. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a quite nasty, actually. Um, it is pretty nasty. Isn't it? Uh, even the years of experience that I've had driving, I think I'll be leaving the Rodeo at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> well, um, I hate to say it, Huggy, but I don't think the Rodeo will get up there with anything short of a rocket under its bum. I don't think the Jeep's got much chance either, Manny, without nah. big tyres and lockers. Yeah, with the ideas, it's not going to work. No, no, you're just it's looking scary. at a tree. Yeah. Yeah. Looking at a tree. At the end of the day, what we've really got here is one vehicle with a proven history of getting to the top of this and one other vehicle, the red truck, that's got the lockers, it's got the power, it's got the gearing, it's got everything. But we've never tried it on anything this steep. And that holly carburetor, although it's been just fantastic everywhere else, oh, this is going to be its moment. If it makes this, it's staying. It's great. If it doesn't make this, come on out and pick up some bits off the red truck. They'll be just down the bottom of Mount Walker. One of the tricks to a serious hill climb is to make sure your vehicle's nicely warmed up before you attempt it. Most of the time, that's not a drama, but you'd be amazed the number of times I've seen people just start up at the bottom of the hill after they've let the car cool down for a few hours, hop in and go for it. It's not too good for the motor, it really isn't. You want to make sure everything's at operating temperature and the whole thing feels right. Mind you, on a hill like this, it can be bye-bye that fast, it doesn't really matter whether it's warm or not. <laughs> Part Hilux and part Mountain Goat. Rod's truck's an absolute beast in this sort of country. You can hear the clack, clack, clack from the auto lockers all the way up, can't you, with the Hilux? Every time he goes into a bit of a turn, it decides to release a wheel. Pretty soon, Rod's got straight up to the top. Go the big red truck. Who's nervous? Well, I'm not nervous at all. The problem here is if the engine dies, I'm going to be going backwards. And I'll probably be going backwards fairly quickly because with no engine vacuum, I've only got manual brakes. Now, fortunately for me, the slotted rotors and those green pads that the AMS guys fitted just before I left means at least I've got one chance of stopping. Only a little one, but at least I've got it. Other than that, well, I know where the trees are. I'll be heading for them. problems with our DVDs, of course, is they don't really show you how steep some of these hills are. But that's all right, because this one's not far out of Sydney, which means oh, there's a couple of million four-wheel drivers can come out and have a look at it for themselves, can't they? In fact, I know an awful lot that have, and I know an awful lot who decided not to drive it too. I don't blame you. If I had my missus and kids in this truck, I wouldn't be taking them up this hill. Well hey, done, mate. well done, hey, buddy. How good well was done, that? mate. How good was that? <laughs> the holy stays, the holy stays, mate. Holy stays, oh, the holy mate. stays. She went to she. I told you she'd be right. Oh. How good was that? That's Young a big well. hill. That's gorgeous. It's a monster hill, yep. isn't it? It's a worry, but it's a good hill. Oh, fantastic, mate. You've done great. I tell you what, my heart's going about 200 miles an hour, but I'm loving it. <laughs> fantastic, <laughs> mate. Yours. I'm really pleased you enjoyed it. And at least the car, we proved the point. The car can do it. The car does it. Yep. Yep. Car's good. Car's good. <laughs> End of the day, the scenery's the best part. It's nice, isn't it? It's beautiful, mate. That's Look, Lithgow over there, isn't Lithgow it? Lithgow straight ahead. Behind us, uh, Bathurst. Yeah. Or, and all the outskirts is all around Bathurst and, and uh, Mount Lambie and all that area. So, yeah. Very picturesque. Wow. How good is this, eh? Mate, it's beautiful. It's God's country. Huh. Absolute God's country. What do we do to top this? Well, Not much. you reckon this is God's country? Yeah. I'm going to invite you back to Blue Hills Farm Retreat, which I own in Hartley Vale. Absolutely smick, big open fire, plenty of grog in the fridge, and we're going to have a night that we will remember forever. <laughs> There's a few magic words in there, and lots of grog in the fridge has got to be one of them. You coming back with us? No, unfortunately, Ruthie, I'll have to say goodbye because I've got to go home and oh. get back to work. 
Huggy yeah, work? Yeah. It's four letter word, mate. We don't say it around here. It is a four letter word, but unfortunately <laughs> someone's got to go back to the real world. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. I'd just like to say thanks to Huggy for all his help while Me we've been too. on this trip. Thanks, Me mate. Too. Really appreciate it. He's been fantastic, and now we know he's not drinking all the beer, he's even better. Yeah. <laughs> well, come on then. You guys walking down or do you want to ride? <laughs> I think we got to ride. I'll take a ride in your truck if you're happy. Oh, I'm happy. You might not be by the time we get down there. <laughs> we managed that descent, no worries at all. Quite impressed, actually, with the old red truck at the moment. Don't tell Milo I said this, but this is quite an exceptional vehicle. Well, it will be, once I iron out some more of the bugs anyway. It's been a big day. That Mount Walker's something else. That was steep. This country up around Lithgow, it is really special. I mean, it's like the cradle of, of our Aussie history. And yet, at the same time, it's awesome four-wheel driving, and it all comes together here. There's some beautiful family camping. You know what? I'm bringing my family down here for a camp. Good dose of history and a whole lot of four-wheel driving. I might see you here, eh? Well, after another couple of hundred detours and a few water crossings, we finally got back to Blue Hills with the fire, fridge full of cold beers. Just doesn't get much better than this. This is the way you toast a real adventure. And we'd had one too, up behind Lithgow. I felt pretty close to me rallies all weekend though, I've got to tell you that. <laughs> what do you reckon, Ruthie? Top spot or not, eh? Oh, 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 mate, this is fantastic, isn't it, man? Oh, yeah, it is. It's unreal. Look, I don't know how to say thank you enough, Rod. The hospitality of those mountains the last couple of days, that is just awesome. I've got to tell you, you know, if you are looking for somewhere to go, camping with your kids, you know, maybe bring the dog along down near a river, how could you do any better than this? Two hours out of Sydney. And not just that, you've got all our Australian heritage thrown into the bargain. This is one of the sweetest trips I've ever been on. And the really great thing about it is, is there's miles more country like this all around just waiting to be discovered. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Manny. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Rod. Thanks, Thank guys. You. That was fantastic. What a beautiful weekend. Welcome to Ruthie's Ruthless Tales. Go on, grab a slice of fair dinkum, Australia. Get your dose of Ruthie and put a smile on your dial. <laughs>